Hi, I'm Greg and welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to talk about how I like to compose music. Let me... We will be using the Sibelius software. Okay, so something that was recent, this Nocturne that I've been working on, we'll just start right here. We'll open it up. Yes, I want to use my VSL, Vienna Symphony Library. So it's loading that up. This takes a couple minutes. Okay, remind me about that later. Let's unmute Pro Tools. So we got the good piano. So now we have a keyboard if we need it. Let's just hide this. And how I compose, well, and then that just repeats. And that's kind of what we have going on here in the right hand. And I can, can preview this by using the left and right arrow keys. And I'm, I'm kind of just reviewing by using the uh, right arrow key. Rewind and let's just listen to what we got. Okay, it's going too fast. Okay, so th this isn't really a finished piece at all. This is ideas. This is my palette. And you can kind of see things change up a little bit. So if I go down into this section here, A little more artistic here. And, and also notice that we haven't put in any dynamics yet. I'm, I'm just in the creating process, manipulating ideas and moving notes around. So if I fast forward this a little further, let's say we go into this section, it's measure 63, uh, well, 64, call it. You know, and of course, this will all be reflective of forte and piano. I'll put the dynamics in later. I'm playing this because when I hit play, I have the option of how I actually played it versus how it would sound if we just played it from the same measure. So th this might have been how I um, it would sound if I would just input the notes, but if I would actually hit live playback, it's gonna it's gonna give me more of the performance of how I actually executed this when I played it. So again, here's a little reference. It got soft right there. Now a little Mysterioso. And of course, this would be a good spot for putting in um, markings too, like Mysterioso and how you would want that to be executed. So, okay, so again, this is just a blank palette. I don't know what is all gonna actually stay and what is actually gonna go, but I, I wanted to just come here and we're gonna just start Let's blah, 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 notations here. This bar line. I just want to put a double bar line. I like to do that. So here we are here now. Measure 79, 81, 82. I'm just going to try to create. This is how I compose stuff like this. So there's several ways that you can do this. Okay. If I if I if I'm using 
the dotted quarter is equal to 49. Um, I should be able to just highlight that, and when I hit, um, and I want it to be, I want to record this from the keyboard. Um, so I'm highlighting both of these staffs to say that I wanted the computer to just do the best it can at splitting that up. I think I have it set at middle C, so it's, it's, it's going to be weird, but you'll see. So I'm just trying to come up with another idea for this. And, and the idea that I had was that little, well, let's just do an improv on this. Let's see if it even works. So if I hit record, it should give me a four beat count off. Okay, and as you see, it kind of looks like gibberish. So we want to quantize this. I'm just highlighting all of that. Um, and from here, I come up into this little search bar. Um, this can get annoying, so I'm just going to drop it down. And one of the cumbersome things about this Sibelius program is learning all of the shortcuts. So I, I just know that renotate performance, and if you just type in the first couple words, it'll come up, is what I'm looking for. This drop down window, you can also go into, um, it's somewhere over here. Well, it's not letting me do it. Let me just change this first and see if I can show you. I want to just change this to 16th notes. Hit OK, it's going to rewrite it, and it looks a little bit better. But it didn't start it on the downbeat, as you can see. I'm an eighth note off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here and go here. Now I'm going to copy that, and now I'm going to click the first eighth note, and I'm going to paste it. Now it put it at the beginning of the beat. So let's just listen to what that sounds like from this point here. Okay, let's take off the uh, metronome so we can kind of get a better feel. And okay, so I kind of like that, um, but I want to fix some things. And I want to elaborate on just this little motif. So this, this opening question answer I like. I like this a lot. But this right here, I want to come right here on the downbeat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of that. I'm going to hit copy. Now it's in a queue. What I'm going to do is hit delete. And then I'm going to hit the beginning bar here and paste it. So now it repastes it. But it's got some crazy ties and whatnot. So let's just go ahead and re-notate. So this one, I could just change this to a quarter note by hitting a quarter note. And it, it, that's what I was kind of hoping that it would do. Sometimes you have to use this. This keypad here, by the way, is a very, very handy thing to use. It helps you navigate and allows you to input notes, correct notes, edit notes, all kind of crazy things. Um, this, I want this to be dotted quarter. And let's copy that and let's change that to just a quarter because I want that to be a breath and that's going to be tied. And we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to change that note to a dotted quarter. And um, this way it's going to kind of hold all of that throughout the whole measure. I'm going to change that to let it breathe and then tie that. This is an eighth and an eighth, so that should just be a quarter. And this should be a dotted quarter. Let's see what this sounds like now. So it 
kind of slows down here. I would obviously write in a rollentando or a retard, and then I'll bring it back to a tempo at this point. But um, I may not even want this here. I might want it to occur a little further. I want to develop these first two. So let's just, let me think about how I want this to go. All right, and then I want to take these two bars and expand on them. But before I do that, I want to create some bars. So here, I'm here. Let's just add a single bar there. See, it added it. Do it again. So you could do it that way and do that four times, or you can just come here and hit multiple and hit four, and it'll add. Now I got as many as that. That's what I was trying to do to begin with. So it's one, two, three, four is what I want. I don't want these three bars here. So you can just hit delete. Yeah, you hit delete. Yeah, get rid of those three. All right, so now we have the four. Now I want to take these two bars and expand them. So I'm going to copy them here. Now I want to do something to these. I don't want to just hear the same thing. So there's some really handy tools up here. Uh, if you go here to note input, because there's lots of ways to, to input notes. And uh, I'm showing you one that I could play in. I could input it in. Um, and that's what I want to do now. I want to just take, um, let's just for the fun of it, let's retrograde. Let's keep the rhythm, but just retrograde the pitches. So all these pitches are going to be backwards now. All right, let's just see what that sounds like. And maybe it... Okay, interesting. Let's hear what it sounds like in context. Okay, I kind of like that, uh, but maybe before we do that, let's develop this a little bit. So here we go. I'm going to just add a couple more bars because now I'm, I'm got another idea. And, and a lot of times that's what happens. You'll, this will spark other ideas. Da -da 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 I want to take that progression and move it up and move it up and let it build in intensity a little bit. So I hit Command C and Command V to paste it. Now these are the passages. I want to take these now. And I don't even need to go up to the composer tools, which are up here, these transformations. I know that I just want to shift this. Shift T gives you the transpose window. And I want to take this up um, a minor third. Okay, let's see what that sounds like. That might sound interesting, and I got another idea. So here it is in context. And now, so now we're going to take half beats. We'll take from here. To here. Just that much now. Copy it. Start it at the beginning of this measure. Okay, and let's transpose that up. This time only a half step. Let's take that. Start it right there. And let's transpose that up. I don't want to miss seven. Let's just take it up another seven. And then we only have a beat to work with. Or from here, we're getting some crazy sharps and flats too. And I'll show you a quick way that we can fix that. And let's see if this will let me just, yeah. Okay, and let's just take that up another half step. And that'll take us into this section. Okay, and it's looking kind of crazy, but let's just listen first. Uh, 
Okay, I, I would probably rework some things. I don't think I like it as much as I thought I would like it. And I think maybe a quick way that we can fix this is take this tie off and we're going to change this note something over here like this because I like it because it has this chord this I'm sorry this interval in it so I'm going to take these six notes right here copy them come over here and I'm going to paste them but I want them to be in the register Because right now, these, these registers are kind of on top of each other. And that's something else that... Uh, so if I just hit Command, Arrow, Down, that takes them down an octave. But before I do anything, let me hit Q and grab a bass clef. And, well, I didn't want it to go there, guys. I wanted it to go there. That's what it was supposed to be. Let's delete that, because I want this all to be left hand. Let me see how if I messed anything up now. Oh, here's the sixteenth. Yeah, we want to continue that. C so uh, C D E F G A flat, which is this A flat, and then you have these D's. And then, I guess they're tight, but they're okay there. So I want to develop this idea, but before I do that, I want to kind of put these back into a little better context for, for viewing. So I want to simplify, I want to run a plug called Simplify Accidentals. And I want to run it on these ones that we started transforming. Uh, because they're starting to get really weird. Uh, so maybe just these ones here. So if I go uh, simplify, simplify, here it is here, accidentals. They are super, they are spelled contrary, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so it just corrected that. And it, Instead of double flats and some crazy things like that, it's respelling the enharmonic spelling, I, I guess. So I like this idea here, uh, but I don't, I want to, again, I want to get rid of this tie. Why is there a hanging tie here? Okay. And I want to take this now. And I want to replace that note with these notes. And then I want to take them down an octave this time. But why did that do that? It didn't... It should have... There's one, two... Oh, I see why. Because it, it, it's tied to this. Sibelius so does exactly what you tell it to. I am temporarily going to remove this tie. Now I'm going to repeat the same process. Just taking those notes, copying them, and then I did, it should just replace them there. And it sort of didn't. So why is it not giving me... I changed that to a... Oh, I see why. I see why. I see! So it's correct. All right, it's because I'm dumb, that's why. I'm just dumb. You can manipulate to this, and the more you learn, the more you figure out what you think you can use it for. Okay, all right, I just don't wanna copy this. I wanna, I wanna transform it. This time, let's do something here. Let's just get this in um, more. I want to rotate the pitches. What this does is it's going to rewrite the selection so the pitches are shifted to the right by one note. So this note will become this note, this note will become this note, and so forth. So if I run the plug, there it is. Slightly different. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, I like it because it's different, but I also want... I also want to um, 
make it go up a half step to, to follow along with what we were doing before. Okay, and now we just want to repeat that process. There was a tie I had in here that I took away and I can't remember, but I don't think it matters at this point. Um, now from here, I'm going to do the same thing. Yeah, this one, I'm going to do the same thing from here to here. Copy those, click them here, paste them there, take them up another half step. And then as a final touch, I want to take them and rotate those another to the right. And now I need to fix all the harmonic spelling. So let's simplify the accidentals on that. And that looks better. Now we have a progression that started off and it's developing and it's moving and building in intensity. And this is kind of how I like to compose. This is one of the three ways that I like to compose. One would just be like sit at the piano and improv it and then go in and edit. Two would be just from scratch working with notes and coming up with formulas like to do like with pitch maps. Um, you see like, um, tone rows and things like that where you use mathematics you come up with a, you know a word that's crazy and you want to map it and see what it would sound like you know super califragilistic expialidocious and then you map that and do some crazy things that that's a little more on the eclectic side for me I'm more of an organic composer I like I like things in the tonal uh, realm and I also like things to develop and stray from the tonal realm. So I like, uh, the easiest way for me to describe it is I like it to go in and out of tonality. And may start with something, an idea that's... And we're back to a kind of... So I'm, I'm real all about that kind of composition. What I love about the program is it gives you instant feedback and it gives you an idea of what it's going to sound like. This is in particularly very, very useful when you're doing orchestral scores because not everybody has a violin section or cello section or a horn section that you can just go and grab. I'm just working with the piano for right now. And, and even if I was writing something for orchestra, I, I tend to like to start with a, uh, a piano scratch uh, template and I would bring it, import it into a score, have it at the bottom as reference and then figure how I want to orchestrate that. I mean, that's the second way. The, the third way is kind of like how we're doing where I'm, I'm mixing both real time idea, putting it on the page and then manipulating it and then seeing where it leads. So let's just see what we got right now. Okay. Let's see what these sound like. So, all right, I, I can down with that. I think what I want to do is add something here now that I know what I, I, I think. Yeah, I want to keep this. So let me just move these measures out of the way, copy them. Let's just put them down here, well far out of the way. You know, for demonstrations purposes, I'm just, eliminating that and um, I'll show you what I have in mind and then I'll try to record it. Oh, I should have had the record button on that one. That sounded pretty cool. Um, okay. Okay, and...
different than what I did the first time and you know sometimes that's just how it goes let's just renotate this and then I'm gonna give you some concluding thoughts on this little demonstration of how I like to compose um, and it should be okay there's a couple other things I think I need to explain these notes here with these ledgers in particular. Okay, two things and then maybe we'll conclude this video. First, see how these ledgers go way up here? And that was because obviously I was playing down here and I all of a sudden switched way up here and started playing. Okay, no big deal. This isn't how it would look on a sheet of music if you did that. We would have to, I can see that I wanna preserve down here so I need to put a bass clef in here and then we can change this to a treble clef. But before I do that, I don't have a lot of room on the staff. These, I want to maintain three. So let me just fix that first. I'm going to take these three, highlight it, and put them as three staves. And then let's take these three. Uh, well, we can then just take these four and make these all one system. So there's an easy command, shift option M will create a system for whatever you highlighted. So I had five or six bars highlighted and I wanted to make them into one system. You can make stuff into a page, into a system, whatever you want. Um, that's all I did. So now I have a little bit of room here. Um, what I need to do is go to the queue and grab one of these bass clefts and you see how my my arrow is now blue. That's carrying that clef. I can just insert it right there. Now I can take and change this. So hit Q and go grab a G clef. And I, if I put it, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, I still had that highlighted. So escaping out a couple of times is always a good thing. Because if you have a note highlighted like this and you accidentally start playing along, it's going to start inputting notes in there just like that, which is another way that you can input, step input. But I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to undo those. I'm going to escape so that none of the notes are colored blue. And now I'm going to go and get the Q, get the treble clef. I could put it right here, and it would also give me a reminder here that it's going to change. So that looks better on the page now. You don't have notes with massive amounts of ledgers now, up here there's the only way that you can get around this is by taking this and this and you can take it down an octave and then hit L for line and then you want to find this OV and that's another way that you could write the same thing now when I play it this way It's playing it in the position where I wrote it, but when I actually move it back and play it with the, with the AI, it'll play it up in that upper register. So you heard that real high. This isn't sounding down here. It's ironing up here where, where it's written. And that's another way of keeping ledgers from having from things like this. So here's another one of them. So I have this here. I can do this. I can fix this little section as well real easy. Just hit this. 
I want to add um, right here. And even though that it's that, I know because I'm going to change it by this one. See, and, and I do it that way because if I just... Here, let me undo these two steps. If I just put the G clef here, it's going to make everything after this a G clef. And you'll see how crazy things are going to look. Just by doing this one thing, you know, it's, it's, just, it's making everything a G clef. And I didn't want everything to be a G clef. I kind of liked it where I had it. I, I like some of this stuff. And this stuff here actually is... Might actually be better having some of this stuff. Maybe... Yeah, th th this is a good jump off point because these ledgers are just... It, these are the ones here and here that really caught my eye. So let me just fix these. There's one other thing I want to do before we get too far. Hit this G, put it there. Okay. It's this. I start with two sixteenths, the eighths, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. I want to make this a group of like an odd number, like seven. Okay. So it sounds like I'm getting faster and faster. The easiest way to do that is hitting Command-7. And that's going to create a tuplet of 7. So now when I... Oh, didn't want to do that. Let's see what that sounds like. I like I like it to go da 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 right here. So again, I'm just going to change the rhythm first. Let's just hit this is a 3 which is a triplet so it's command 3 that creates the triplet. All right, and now these 3 should be up a half step. Well, I mean, the easy way to do that is just take it up, make this a natural, and then make that a flat. So now it's... All right, let's see what that sounds like from here. Okay. So... Ba ba. And then what we can do, let's just make this a dotted quarter. Let's make this a dotted quarter. And let's get these guys. Put them here. And let's take those up a major second because I have an idea what I think I want this to sound like now I want to just eliminate these bars so that it'll start a trend another little um, progression so if I take it again from here Okay, well, that's how I like to compose. Uh, I like to incorporate more than just one method, uh, step right, improv right, uh, recording, and then editing, uh, or just working off the palette, taking stuff, manipulating it. Um, before I had this keyboard and this setup in here, I was working in my office computer um, and I, all I had was literally a mouse and a keyboard. And I wrote the first 19 etudes that uh, I published in March this year with a mouse and a keyboard, which is, well, let's just say it was a great uh, exercise in learning how to write 
using just a keyboard and a mouse. But the more things that you have available, the better. Sometimes I like to just sit at the piano and just play ideas and then use paper and pencil, jot them down and then bring the pencil, paper, set it down here and start trying to get it onto the final product. But this is just one stage. This now, once I get it to where I would like it, and maybe I'll do some, some more videos with all of this. Um, right now, I'm kind of like toying with the idea of um, writing the next set of uh, piano pieces. Um, they're either going to be impromptus or they're going to be nocturnes. Maybe they're going to be a combo of both. But um, when the fall comes, that's usually when I got to get back to work. And uh, I try to work diligently until Christmas. And then I'll, I'll start the editing process. Um, and then once I get the, the editing process to make it sound musical, I'll take this info and import it into uh, my DAW, which I like to use Pro Tools. And then from there, it's much easier for me to manipulate the sound recording end of it. What am I losing? I hope not. Well, I guess that was it. So if you're still recording, I'm going to sign off. I appreciate that uh, you guys tuned in. Hope you like it. If you do, don't you know what to do. I'm not going to tell you. Um, but, yeah, this is how I like to compose music. See you guys on the next one.